Hey there everyone. So today I wanted to talk about depth cameras, uh, in particular depth cameras as they relate to using Steam VR and the HTC Vive. So a little bit of background if you don't know about what I mean by a depth camera. What I mean is a additional camera within your scene that renders only a particular layer of objects. So for instance, you can see here I have my depth one camera and this is set to um, depth one, which the standard depth is zero and objects are rendered on t um, in order on top of each other based on the depth. As they get more positive, they take precedent in the draw order. So in this case, this being a depth one, it will always be drawn and will not be obscured by anything in a depth zero or below. And you can see here in my culling mask, I have the layer set up to only draw depth one objects. Now with Steam VR, you have your camera eye, which is the, um, just your main camera in the scene. And it's culling mask is then everything except for depth one. And it's depth, uh, I think, defaults to negative one. I'm not sure if I changed that on purpose or if that was something Steam VR set up. But in this case, though, so as you can see here, I've got my, so this headset HUD canvas is a layer that I'm going to draw some UI elements that needs to track with the headset. And you can see here the layer is default, meaning it's going to be drawn by the normal scene camera. And as I move around, and sadly you're not going to see what this actually looks like in the headset, but you'll have to deal with um, the Unity view. You can see that as I bring this down here, it starts to get clipped by the environment because they're being drawn on the same depth layer. Now if I switch this to depth one, what happens is you know, it's just constantly drawn over top of the scene, even though its position in 3D space is now like below or, in, or within this plane. Now, there's nothing unique about VR in all of that. However, when you're dealing with a normal depth camera in your, you know, typical non-VR scenario, it's a pretty common practice to anchor the camera below your main camera and set it to a position of zero, zero, zero with no rotation. So the depth camera is always matched to the position and rotation of your normal camera. And then the only real difference is which layer you're drawing things on. You don't really need to worry about things being offset from each other or whatever, or writing custom code to keep your cameras maintained at the same position and rotation. But when I went to follow that same process, I had some very interesting results and we'll see if we can get this to show up on the screen. So when an object is not a depth one, you can see that the object disappeared. Right, and there's actually, there it is. So you can see it just, it appears at random points. I'm tilting my Z axis, but you can see the, the UI elements kind of flying around everywhere. Now being depth one, the object will, it'll work as expected, but you know, sometimes you don't want to just have depth one objects underneath in a separate camera. Maybe, um, you know, you want to have other 3D elements that travel with you but aren't overdrawn, like a menu that's attached to, um, that's specifically set to be in front of the headset, but you want it to be, have a physical representation. And hopefully I'm actually explaining that correctly. The, the deal seems to be that a camera that is anchored anywhere within this camera rig object will automatically match the headset's position. And because our depth camera is, uh, uh, 
a child of our normal eye camera, it's actually adding additional uh, rotations and position changes aside from what we would normally have. You can see here with the two different cameras, like they are actually in different positions and locations, or positions and rotations rather. And that creates some, you know, some very weird behavior as you saw. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure if this is just specifically because of the way Steam VR works or if it has to do with this camera head object, which if you'll notice, when we're in design time, the camera head object actually gets disabled and the camera eye moves up to be directly underneath the camera rig. And I have to assume that was some kind of um, like backwards compatibility type of thing. Like they changed something in the, in the way they're setting up the, um, the Steam VR environment and decided they no longer needed that element, but wanted to maintain some kind of you know, I didn't want to just get rid of it in case people had already coded towards having that object there. But in our case, all we really need to do is, you know, make sure that our depth camera is sibling, is sibling to the head object, or rather just immediately under the camera rig. And when Steam VR goes to set up everything with the camera eye and bring it up, they're both kept level, um, sibling to one another and it automatically matches up to the headset position. So hopefully somewhere in there is something useful that helps you out. It took me a little while to figure that out, to figure out what was going wrong with my UI and why it was acting squirrely. But there you have it. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.